Alright guys, welcome to the UK Scale and Crawler video. Um, I did a video a while back on how to set up DIG on uh, for Juli SCs on a Flysky GT3V. Um, upon doing the video since then, as we were setting loops up on the weekend, I had to re-watch the video again and I found that there's one part that's wrong on it. Um, well, one part that I forgot to put in the video. So now that I've figured that out, what I'm going to have to do, or what this is, is this is basically a new video on how to do it, and then I'm going to take the other one down and put this one up so it's all right. Um, I'm going to make a brand new channel on the radio, and then once I've made a new channel on the radio, I'll go through every setting that you need to do, um, and then I'll show you it all working at the end as well, so there's no no qualms about it, you can't get it wrong. Then. Um, but yeah, anyway, so... Give us two seconds, I'll just flip camera around and get everything sorted and then as soon as I've done that um, I'll fire camera back up and I'll show you how to do it. See you in a sec. Alright guys, right welcome back. Um, so yeah, to set the dig up, right, I've just made it again on this channel so I'm definitely 1 million percent sure on it now. So what we'll do is we'll go to another channel again. Now bear in mind, to do, the ha or to do this you need to have your controller hacked. Um, you can get the hat kit from overkillrc.com. Um, basically, I'll give you instructions and the firmware and everything. You rehack it and then you turn this into an 8 channel controller, as most of you all know, anyway. Um, but yeah, so, right, so you pick whichever model you want, and then once you've decided on what model you want, push you that big button down there, and then that'll then lock that in. Then. You can go into name and change the name of it, but there's no point because I've already got one set up for mine anyway. So, right, this is the beginnings of everything. I'm going to do all this in one cut, so you can't get old. Basically, there's not going to be anything wrong with it. So, hold the big button down, and it'll go into this menu. Right, if you, once it's being hacked, all you do is hold that. And then, once you've held that in, it goes into a sub-menu on the reverse. So... First thing you need to do is change that to where it says number three. So you get the three flashing. Now once you've got that flashing, push the button down once quick and it'll jump over to this menu. Now you need to change that to where it says dig. So you've got all these different settings here. That's basically for what your third channel is going to do. So you keep turning, keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go, dig. Once it gets to dig, push the big button down once. Right, and it'll come up with BNL. Now, once it comes up with that, you want to change that to BMO, which is momentary pause, so it'll lock it at 100% one way and 100% the other. Now, when you're doing that, that's controlling that switch there. If you can see, which is the third channel trim switch. So then that'll then turn this into a three-position switch. So when it's centred, it'll drive both axles. When you push it forward, it'll lock one axle. And then when you release it, it'll drive both again. And then when you pull it backwards... It'll lock another axle, and when you release it, it'll do. It'll go back to all four again. So you want that on BMO. So you push that down. Then REO, push the big button down again. PV zero, push the big button down again. And once you've done that, the number three will start flashing again. Once it started flashing, you want to change that so it says D. And then you want to push the big button in again quick. And once you've pushed that in, you want to change that to where it says Dig as well. Oh, just find dig, there it is. So you push that in. Now this you want to change to BRS. Um, what the BRS does is it allows you to go up in increments. So this D is the dual rate switch there. So basically what will happen now is, is once you've set it to whatever, however many increments you want, you push that and it will go up in certain increments. So it give you proportional drive on both axles. So you can slow the back axle down and drive the front one slightly faster. Or you can slow the front one down and drive the back one faster, depending on what situation you're in. So, you push the big button down on BRS, and then this is the increments it will now go up in. Um, on mine, I've got mine set to 10%. But you can have everything from 1, 2, or, yeah, 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 67, and then up to 100. Right, so if you've got it set to 50, then every time you push that switch, either forwards or backwards, it'll knock 50% of the power off whichever axle you want it to do. So I have mine set to set to 10% because it makes it a little bit more 
how can I put it, a little bit more controllable. So yeah, this, this is basically setting up proportional drive anyway. So you want that on 10%. Then you want REO again. Then ORO. And then it'll start flashing with the D. Now once the D is flashing again, you want to change that to C. Now once the C is flashing, push your button in and it should say off. You want to change that to DRS. So keep going through so you find it. Sorry, not DRS, DGR. So you click DGR. Then you change that to where it says CH3. So then what this is now going to do is every time you use your proportional drive to save having to keep clicking it back. So say you've been up to 40 or 50% and then you want to bring it back. Save having to click backwards. All you'll do is you'll hold that switch down. And as you hold that down, it'll jump straight back to 50-50 split again. So, you want that on CH3. You click the button. Then you go on REO. PV0. And then hold your switch down. And that'll lock all of that information in. So, oh yeah, once you've done that, hold that down and it'll lock it in. Now, if you push the end button. Right, it'll come out the menus. And then now, if I push that switch in there. That switch will give you dig 100% forward axle, 100% rear axle. As soon as you release it, back to zero. So that's that switch there. Right now, your proportional drive is on the switch just above it, which is this one, the dual rates button. So push it forward, you got 10%. Push it forward again, you got 20% drive. Push it forward again, you get 30%, 40%, 50 and so on, and so on, and so on, all the way up to 100. Now, I'm just clicking this back just so I can show you the other way. So it'll work all the way up to 100% in reverse as well. So that's now locking both axles or driving both axles or sending a split amount of power to whichever one you want. But as I said, if you knock that up to say 40 or even 60%, right, and then you push your third channel switch in, it'll jump straight back to zero. So say for instance you're going up a rock face and you've had more power spinning at the front, so say you've got it running say it's 30%, so you've got 30% more power going to the front axle than you have to the back. And then as you get to the crest of the rock and you go over and you want to drive all four wheels again, if you just push that switch, it'll jump straight back to a 50-50 split. Alright, now the part that I forgot on the, recent, on the last video was this bit. This is why it probably wasn't working for a few people. So go back into your menus again, where it says end point, Hold your switch down on the end point. And it'll come up with CH4 or D. Right, now, the CH4 and the D, right, as this is basically setting up the mixing ratios for everything. So what you want to do is you go into where it says channel, it'll come up with the flashing D, sorry. No, it won't, start again. It'll come up with the number 4. Right, you want to change that to D. Right, and you turn that, and it should say number 3. Now, this is setting the mixing ratios, as I said. So, if, say, for instance, you're running four-wheel steering, if you change that to one and you've got a servo plugged into the channel three, it'll mix with with the front steering. So when you turn your steering, it'll steer the back for you as well. But we don't want that. We want dig. So we want that in channel three. And channel three is going to be where your other speed control is going to be plugged into. So you do that. Enter that in, just touch the button quick, and then it'll come up with this. Now, this is the mixing between both speed controllers. So, because of the mix, say for instance, I'm going to put it, say you, they, when you slightly touch your trigger, the front axle starts driving slightly before the rear one. This is the menu you need to go into. And then this will mix, this is mixing the split between both speed controllers, so you can get them to both start turning at exactly the same time. So you can change that to however or whatever you need, basically, so you can get it driving perfectly. Um, that was the bit that I forgot, but once you've done that anyway, so you change that to whatever you think it'll need. You probably find that you have to go back in and keep changing that till you get it right. But yeah, once you got it right, push your button in again, and it'll go back to this menu, and hold your switch down. Right now, that will 
as it stands now, drive all four wheels. It'll lock both axles. It'll do the proportional drive. It'll do the lock. Um, I've also found since setting Luke's up that if you go into it, it says trim and hold the switch down again, it gives you a sub trim. So not only do you have, let's go back and go into the normal one. So not only do you have your normal trim, which you can only trim channel one and channel two, if you hold the switch down instead, you can then trim all three channels up. So you can get everything running absolutely perfect. Now there's not going to be any sort of lag in between the ESCs or anything like that. You can literally trim them up to whatever you need. So you can do it on channel three. Um, you can also do it on channel two, as you can see. And then also, since doing that, I've also found you can set the dual rates on them as well. So if you hold the switch down again, it'll go into sub the sub dual rates menu for channel one, which is your steering, obviously. Then channel two, it'll say on, but then you can also change the dual rates on channel three, which if you go into your normal dual rates, you can only do one and two. So yeah, there's all that, uh, and I think there's the Expo as well. In fact, no, the Expo one doesn't do nothing. Now I remember. But yeah, anyway, you follow the first part, the first part of all that, so you'd be messing about in the reverse menu, and you'd be messing about in the endpoint menu. But bear in mind, to go into the sub menus on them, you have to hold the switch down, that button. You hold it down, and then it'll then go into all the menus. So you got dig, dig, and then DGR for channel three. So, I hope that helps. Right, in fact, I'll tell you what, hang on one second, I'll just flip his back. So yeah, I hope that helps anyway. Um, it does definitely work, exactly what I've just shown you then. Um, in fact, hold on one more second, I'll go and get my XR and show you it running. Right, and we're back. So, as you can see, we've got exactly the same drive on both. Start off at the same time. Do all that lot right now for push that switch in there which will be the channel 3 trim switch push that forward drives just the front axle as soon as I release it we'll start driving the back right, exactly the same with regards to the back one so we'll pull it backwards drives just the back as soon as I release it drives all forward again right, then you've got the proportional drive now so I'll try and do this so you can see it Right, I reckon you might be able to see that. So, driving along. Hold up, that was me, that. See, so the front axle's spinning faster than what the rear is now. And then, as soon as I want to make it go back to all four, push that in. And then, back to all four again. So, yeah, there you go, as you can see, it does work. Um, as I said, you will need the hat kit from Overkill RC. Um, if you type Overkill RC into Google, it'll definitely come up there, and then you can order the hat kit from them. Um, but yeah, otherwise, hope that helps you all out. Thank you very much for watching. Um, share this out, share this right between the crawling communities and stuff as well, if you don't mind, because there's a lot of people who are looking for a budget style radio. Um, instead of having to go out and spend silly money on something like a Futaba, which yeah, Futaba is probably the best you'll get, but you know, some people haven't got two, three hundred quid or even three or four hundred dollars for one. Um, so these radios are only like thirty pounds. I think they're about maybe forty dollars, and then the hat kit's twenty five. I think. Um, and then once you've got that, your game on. You can run up to eight channels. You can have up to fifty models. You can have. What, and then there's all them menus to mess about where you can do four wheel steering, you can do dig. You know, so a good radio, good cheap radio. Um they've got really good range on them, they don't lag. Um I've never to this date had a problem with it losing signal or it deciding to glitch. So they're not bad. Um but yeah, anyway, right so I'm off ski. I will see you all later because the little one's about to wake up. So, in fact, I'll tell you what, you haven't seen me little one yet, have you? Hang on. Uh, 
So I'll go and show you me little babby. Me little babby boy. <coughs> there you go. Say hello, little dude. Oh, you're all on camera. And the world is going to see you. I know I pull that face as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, right. Thanks, guys. Got to go and do a bottle for him. See you later.